Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Todd Schmader. I'm Chief of Police for the City of Omaha. With me today are members of my executive command staff. I want to say from the onset, <coughs> Mayor Stother is unable to make the press conference. She is in St. Louis visiting her mother. However, I want everybody to know that the mayor and I have been in constant contact since this incident occurred, all the way from when it started to leading up right before this press conference. The purpose of this press conference is to provide an update into the 3402 Parker Street shooting. <coughs> Before I get into the order of the press conference, I want to offer my condolences to the victims, families, and friends. My executive command staff you see behind me and myself responded to the scene early this morning. We could see the emotion, the tears in the victims, families, and friends. And the pain in their eyes that we saw leads us and pushes us towards even more resolve in this matter. I want the community to know the Omaha Police Department will not stand for this level of violence. And we will do everything in our power to bring the shooters in this incident to justice. The order of our press conference is as follows. I'm going to give you a timeline of events of what took place last night. I will talk about our law enforcement response moving forward. We'll talk about the context of violence the City of Omaha has seen in December and January. At the end, I will take some questions. Over the past 24 hours, two women have been killed by gang-related violence and one male. Seven other victims have been injured by gunfire in two separate shootings. On Friday, January 23, 2015, at 1010 p.m., Omaha police officers were dispatched to 1710 North 32nd Street to investigate a shooting. At the location, officers located a man who had been shot. Officers also discovered that a female shooting victim had been transported to the hospital by a private vehicle. These two victims were struck by gunshots while they were outside of their home. A second shooting occurred early Saturday morning at 1.44 a.m. Omaha police officers responded to a radio call of a shooting at 34th and Parker Street. When officers arrived, they located several victims at 3402 Parker Street suffering from gunshot wounds. Omaha Fire Department medics pronounced two adult female victims deceased at the scene. We have learned that a third victim has died in this incident. The three deceased victims next of kin have been notified of their deaths. The three homicide victims are 19-year-old Jaquila R. Foster, 24-year-old Leticia J. Fox, and 26-year-old Cameron R. Harris. And he died within hours of this press conference here today. Two additional victims at the scene were suffering from gunshot wounds and were transported by ambulance to Nebraska Medicine. Three more victims were transported to area hospitals by private vehicles. They were also suffering from gunshot wounds. The five additional victims, as well as the three homicide victims, should be contained in your media packet, but I will briefly go over them. 20-year-old Trayvon D. Lilliard, 21-year-old Trentel R. Miller, 21-year-old Johnny T. Tiller, 20-year-old Jordan D. Zyla, and 25-year-old Andrelette L. Bush are shooting victims from last from this morning. The Omaha Police Department is in the very early stages of this investigation. At this time, I'm only able to provide limited details due to the nature of the ongoing investigation. What I can tell you is that when the first responding officers arrived at the scene of the shooting, there were at least 40 to 50 people at a house party at the residence of 3402 Parker Street. Witnesses described people being both inside and outside of the residence when numerous gunshots rang out just prior to 1.44 a.m. 3402 Parker Street is an unoccupied house. It's awaiting transition to a new tenant. Inside the house, it's, it's absent furniture. There's no furniture inside the house where this party was occurring. There were multiple shooters exchanging gunfire, and it is unknown at this time if any of the victims were intended targets or simply caught up in the gunfire. 
Early indications show the gunfire to be the direct result of gang violence. Four of the victims, the male victims, have, are documented as gang members with the city of Omaha. The vast majority of the people of the party did not assist police at the scene or talk to us at all. I want to speak directly to those party goers for just a moment. I realize the fear that you may have had and some intimidation that could have taken place there at the scene early this morning. Now that you are away from that scene and have an opportunity to be away from any intimidation, I'm asking you for the sake of the community to contact law enforcement. We have means at our disposal to protect what you say to us and to protect your safety. All you got to do is reach out to us. The bodies of two of the deceased that were left at the scene, the two females, had to remain at the scene for some time while we investigated. I want the community to know the bodies were treated with dignity, respect, and they were out of view of the public's eye. But bullet trajectory is going to be very important down the road in this investigation, which is why it was so important for us not to move those bodies. The notification of victims' families can only be done when we are absolutely sure who those victims are. Social media is so instant, it occurs almost immediately after one of these large-scale matters occurs. And I, I caution everybody, they're not always accurate. Your only source for social media that you can rely on is if it comes from law enforcement. Both of the shooting instances that occurred are being investigated to determine if they're related. At this point, we don't know. Anyone with information is urged to contact the homicide unit at 402 444 5656. I also encourage anyone with information to contact Crime Stoppers. Tips leading to the arrest of the suspect in the homicide or homicides are eligible for $25,000 for each one. Cash reward. Tipsters will remain anonymous for their safety. They will be assigned a code name, and if the reward is granted, they will be provided with a password to provide a designated bank for the pickup. No one will know the tipster's identity, not even law enforcement. There's some other notable instances that occurred last night that I need to put into context for the morning of January 24th. That give you a feel of what law enforcement was dealing with this morning. At 2.40 a.m., a help an officer was broadcast over the police radio. Uniformed patrol officers were attempting to manage a crowd of more than 40 people at Nebraska Medicine Emergency Room when a fight broke out. Two parties were arrested for disorderly contact and one disorderly conduct, and one person was tased during the incident. Should have details in the media packet that we provided to the media. I do want to add, had an opportunity to be up at that scene as well. Nebraska Medicine has got to be one of the finest medical facilities in this country. I'm, I'm completely amazed at the manner in which they assess victims and begin working. It truly saves lives in our community. Omaha is fortunate to have them. Saturday morning at 3.37 a.m., uniformed patrol officers on the perimeter of the shooting scene at 3402 Parker heard four to six gunshots fired just to the north of their location. Officers observed a suspicious person. This person fled on foot from the officers. After a, brief, after a brief foot chase, the officers lost the suspect. However, the officers found a handgun laying on the ground. At 4 a.m., officers spotted the same suspect as he exited from a bushy area, and they took the suspect into custody. He is identified as Christopher T. Grutel, born in 1982. Detectives are investigating to determine if this individual or the firearm that was recovered is related in any way to our shootings. It's just too early to tell. He was booked for felon in possession of a firearm and obstructing a peace officer. Moving forward from a law enforcement response, you will see a much heavier law enforcement presence in the areas of our shootings to try to prevent retaliation. However, it's important for me to note law enforcement cannot get in the minds of everybody in our city. They cannot get into the minds of the shooters. Many of these shootings and homicides as a result took place inside of houses or right outside of the houses. No measure of law enforcement presence is going to be able to prevent that when it's occurring inside of a house. 
We also continue to address gang and gun violence from very high level through law enforcement operations and also to address illegal guns in our city. One of the things that we are seeing very often in the element of gang and gun violence is something called a straw purchase. What a straw purchase is is when a legal gun purchaser purchases that gun legally then turns it over to a gang member or another violent person and then that gun is used in a crime. We're seeing burglaries where firearms are taken. And the, the third trend I want to talk about today, the guns that are illegal, either stolen in burglary, straw purchases, on occasion, shipped into the city of Omaha, they're stored at a location, and a lot of times the gang members will simply pass those weapons around. Context of the overall violence in Omaha, I need to get into before I take some questions. Since December 21st, 2014, there have been 11 homicides. This is on the heels of a year where we had the least we've had in, in almost a decade. My homicide detectives are very skilled, they're dedicated, and they're determined to solve each and every homicide, and they've solved the majority of them already. However, the most important component to any investigation, the information that detectives obtain from witnesses and from a cooperating community. I had a few people say to me, Chief, what is going on in North Omaha? My response was very quick to them, and that is, there's nothing going on in North Omaha. North Omaha is a fabulous community with rich in tradition. The violence that we're seeing here is the product of gang members who have no regard for human life. I was present this morning. I saw it personally. I saw members of the gang community that I'm talking about with complete disregard for the deceased bodies at the scene, complete disregard and, and no feeling at all for it. The blame lies directly on the hands of the shooters on this matter. And the emotion to resolve